Hello and welcome back to Shark Jets. I'm um, Skid Bits. Uh, I recently got a request to show the scripting components in uh, Horizon here, Facebook Horizon. Um, there's a lot of things called Horizon. There's uh, Horizon Zero Dawn and New Horizons and all kinds of stuff. So it's kind of hard for me to keep it in my brain. But anyways, let's go ahead and do that. He, he didn't want me to speak, but I like the sound of my own voice. So I will be speaking while I show these things real quick. So let's go ahead and get into create mode and figure out how all this stuff works, what it all does. Uh, I'm not going to go through everything and actually do everything, but I'm going to show you all the options in the scripting menu so that you can kind of uh, prepare and uh, get a head start when this thing finally ships. Let's do it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. First, if you like these videos, please make sure to like and subscribe. All right, without further ado. All right, let's do this. Let's go back out here, go to create, and I'm gonna create a new world just for you. A whole new world. Okay, here we are. I'm gonna need guns, lots of them. I feel like I'm in the matrix. Anyway, so uh, like I said, we pull this back to get into build mode. Now we are a god among men. Whee. Hello, blue man, blue person. All right, so uh, to get into scripting, you push your actual button on the left controller here. And that brings up this wonderful thing here. And if we go into gizmos, we get the script object. Now we can close this thing and dig in by pushing up. And let's put this over here. All right, so the first tab has your if statement. So if something equals something, then do something, right? Uh, and then we have a bunch of events which automatically fire here. So when the world is started, happens when you start the world, of course, when you first get into it. When an event is received, you've seen that in my last video, you can create a, an event uh, when trigger is entered by an object or when trigger is exited by an object. And then again, when trigger is entered by the player and when trigger is exited by the player. When something collides with an object, when something collides with the player, when an object is grabbed by the player, when an object is released by the player, when an object is grabbed by two hands, when an object is no longer grabbed by two hands, when an object is attached to the player, when an object is unattached from the player, you see they're gonna have to, you're gonna have to fix these little spacing issues. When index trigger is pushed, you can't see it, uh, when index trigger is released, when button one is pressed and released, when button two is pressed and released, uh, and then you can send an event to an object. And then you can send an event with delay, which I did in the last video. Uh, cancel sending with delay in case you don't want to trigger that because something stopped it. For instance, if, uh, I don't know, you called for a bus and then you changed your mind, you want to stop the bus from actually showing up. Uh, so that's cancel sending with delay and then connect to event I have no idea what that one is. So the next tab here is about moving things. You can move to something, you can move by something so that you're not actually inside it. You can rotate to something and you can rotate by something and you can scale to something. So that's matching something else's size apparently. Uh, you can move over time, which again, I did in the last video. You can move by over time, which I'm not sure what that one is. I think it's the same thing. Yeah, okay. So move to will put you inside the destination. Move by will put you close to the destination over time. And then rotate to and rotate by over time and scale to over time. Uh, you can respawn the player. So if you know if the player dies or something, you can put them back in the original spawn point, which would be this little blue thing over here. 
You can disable object physical motion. You can enable physical motion. You can push something or you can push it with mass or you can push it in local space or you can push it in local space with mass. You can spin something, spin it in local space. You can stop something from moving. And you can launch from an object, good for bullets. All right, the next one over here, you can show an object, you can hide an object. That'll just toggle its visibility. You can paint an object, change the color, enable an object, disable an object, set simulated. That means you can set collision and interactivity. You can set the gravity on and off. You can display text. You can play an animation, which we've done. Uh, you can pause the animation, stop an animation, play, pause, stop sounds, play, stop visual effects, reset the world state. So if you want to put everything back to how it was, that's how you do it. Then you've got our logic operators. These are good for your if statements. If something equals something, if some, something not equals something, if it's less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and not or basic stuff, plus, minus, times, divide, percentage, modulus, uh, absolute ceiling, clamp, floor, fraction, fracking, I don't know, lerping, maximum, minimum, and square root, power, cosine, sine, tangent, accosted, <laughs> ASIN, ATAN, exponent, log 10, random number with decimals, random number, 2D Perlin noise, object transformation, you can change the position of an object, rotation of an object, scale of an object, velocity of an object, forward direction of an object, upward direction of an object, new vector from x, y, z, x of vector, y of vector, z of vector, normalize, dot, cross, distance, magnitude, reflect, new rotation, look at something, new color from RGB, RGB to HSV, HSV to RGB, get object color, position of the player, forward of the player, the name of the player, the length of a string, the variable as a string. That's about all for that one. And then you can set a value. You can set player persistent variable to something. You can get the persistent variable. You can debug print to send something to the log, which isn't on the screen. Uh, you can get the value of self, number input, Boolean input, player or vector input, rotation input, color input, and string input. And then finally, you can create variables which are of type number, boolean, object, player ID, which is a string, vector, rotation, color, and a string. And that is all of the tabs currently available for scripting. And this percentage here, uh, it goes for everything in the world. So it's not just a scripting thing. I got a question about that last time. Well, I guess that one is particular to the script. So yeah, apparently uh, this capacity is for the script on its own. So I was wrong when I said that that is world related. I believe there is one also related to the world, but I don't know where that is. So yeah, the more stuff you add to your script, the more that capacity limit fills up and you only have apparently so much you can do. All right, if you found this video helpful or useful or informative or pleasant, or you just love me or like me or find me tolerable, I would appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe buttons so that I know that you know that I should keep making videos. Thanks again. See you next time.